Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs in Switzerland. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1 to 36 scale Maisto Mini Cooper. It's out of my box of larger scale castings and it's been waiting its turn in the restoration rotation for some time now. I offered to do a custom as a company car for a channel supporter and online friend and his YouTube channel called Terrain by Aaron. I asked him what kind of car he'd like and he said a mini. Any other request? He said a splash of red, please. Well, Aaron, done and done. Actually, my promise to do this was a while ago, so thanks for your patience. Today's the day and I hope you'll enjoy what I have in store for the mini. Maisto puts their 1 to 36 scale cars together with a couple of screws, which makes it that much easier for me to take them apart. There's a nicely detailed dashboard. The doors are removable. When I flip the rest of the casting over, you can see that the roof which holds the window unit is held in place by these tabs and they're just melted plastic, so I'm remelting them with a soldering iron. But it begins catastrophically. There was a little hairline fracture on that roof and wouldn't you know it, came apart as soon as I went to work on it. Could have done without that. but. That's easily repaired. I take the headlights out in the same method with the soldering iron. Be sure to put these in a safe place because they will just roll off the desk. Guaranteed, if I don't. These multiple short little video clips serve two purposes. First, it lets you know what the casting looks like in all of its various stages. And secondly, it's reference material for me to go back and look at when I'm painting and detailing and trying to remember what did that look like in the first place. <laughs> Epo Putty is my media of choice for this repair. Epo or Epo. And it goes on very simply, two part, a resin and a hardener. That needs to dry up overnight. It can be in a big lump, doesn't matter, because I'm going to sand it down and shape it and smooth it as best I can. If I have learned anything, then you shouldn't be able to tell at the end which of these corners was repaired. I like these sanding sponges. I have them in several different grits, mostly for fine application like this. Alright, I gotta get underneath that edge now and take it down. That's come out nicely. I primed it. I painted it in high gloss white. Look at the lights bouncing off of that. And you'd never know there had been a happy little accident. Lots of good things are coming up on my channel and I'm feeling very refreshed and energized having just hit 5,000 YouTube subscribers. Thanks you again. Tune in for a Porsche 911 Turbo, a classic Nomad for the September 4 Horseman Invitational. I'm taking on the Mad Max Interceptor as part of my ongoing Fury Road series. And while I'm feeling my oats, how about Ken Block's iconic Hoonigan. Keep an eye peeled for the Four Horsemen 2024 build calendar. Here's a sneak peek. The January theme is going to be exotic cars and our guest horseman will be Matchbox Mark. One more big thank you to all of you, my viewers, for helping me reach that big milestone just recently. Sure do appreciate your support. And if you're not already subbed up, like most of the people who watch the videos, why don't you take a moment right now and hit that button? It's absolutely free and it's the best way you can help me to continue to make videos that will be regular Saturday uploads. Did you know that the Mini came about because of a fuel shortage caused by the 1956 Suez Crisis? Petrol was rationed in the UK, sales of large cars slumped, and the market for German bubble cars boomed even in the United Kingdom, where imported cars were still a rarity. There's the requested splash of red. Big splash, <laughs> head to toe, but it really freshens it up a lot and makes a big difference. 
This week's community shout-out goes to Terrain by Aaron, the recipient of the little mini. I've left a link in the description so you can check out his very interesting scratch builds and all of the creations that he comes up with. There's absolutely no doubt that the mini is considered an icon of 1960s British pop culture. Its space-saving transverse engine and front-wheel drive layout influenced a generation of car makers. In 1999, the Mini was voted the second most influential car of the 20th century, behind the Ford Model T and ahead of the Citroen DS and Volkswagen Beetle. The performance versions, the Mini Cooper and the Cooper S, were successful as both race and rally cars winning the Monte Carlo Rally in 1964, 65, and 67. In 1966, the first-placed Mini, along with nine other cars, was disqualified after the finish under a controversial decision that the car's headlights were against the rules. <laughs> I don't know how your headlights can be against the rules, but that took them out of the running that year. Time to get all deckled up, and I'm going with the classic checkerboard roof in red and white. These are tricky to do because of the rounded edges and the four corners, so I cut a little diagonal slit in each of those red corners, and that helps it a little bit, along with some microset and microsol to soften them up. On the hood, I'm putting the name of Aaron's channel, it's simply Terrain by Aaron, and also his catchphrase, keep scratching that build. It's a company car, after all. I sure do enjoy his work, and I know you will, too. Aaron has a very cool graffiti logo, TBA, Terrain by Aaron, that's going to go on the doors. And I did a lot of the detailing on this car with ghost white decals because I can't paint an accurate straight edge line like that by hand. So that's my method for this one. My channel logo goes on the bottom of the otherwise untouched chassis because it was in good condition. But the windshield needed quite a bit of refurbishing, so I started with a 2000 grit and my sanding sponges go up incrementally, and you can see I went all the way up past 12,000, followed by some plastic polish. And I end up in the pledge revive, which I had to do in two parts, front and back, just because of the size of this single piece glass unit. It's important to let all of the excess fluid drain off onto a little napkin. Be sure to cover it up with a double tap. Tickety-boo! Here's about a week's worth of work on the hobby bench now, all clear-coated and dried up and cured, as it must be before you handle it this way, otherwise you get permanent fingerprints all over everything. I put the roof back on the glass unit, and that all has to go back onto the body of the Mini. I'm using some super glue this time. The tabs go back into the holes. Here's my fairly detailed dashboard with a speedometer, dial, and a mini emblem on the steering wheel. That has to go in before the chassis and the wheels. And those very convenient screws. The front one is long, easy to distinguish, and two in the back. Just the same as it came apart. Remember that this is a pullback toy with a little motor over the rear axle. Let's see if it still works. Success! A quick look back at the Mini at Ground Zero. It's just faded and scratched up and play-worn. 
so it got freshened up and of course customized for Aaron with his logo and requested color scheme. Maple Leaf Custom License Plate, build number 265. I like the checkered roof, I think that looks cool. I even put in some Union Jack taillights on the back. <laughs> That's where Aaron lives, by the way. So I hope you're happy, my friend, and thanks to everyone for watching another video today. Drive carefully, it's coffee time.